That is my vision book. <coughs> Give me your prayers, child. <coughs> Hey y'all, it's Ashley and Shantavia and, and this, this is Obedience, Obedience Podcast. Podcast. So today we want to welcome you guys back to our channel for our brand new episode, Write the Vision. Mm -hmm. So in this episode, we are going to be sharing with you guys the process of us creating our vision boards. Yeah. Um, and then we're also going to include sped up film of us actually creating our vision boards. Right. And over that sped up, we are going to share a little devotional with you guys about why it's so important to write the vision. Mm -hmm. And then each one of us are going to discuss what our vision board means and what we are praying and hoping for in 2021. Mm -hmm. But before we get into this video, we do want to let you guys know that this video is number one of an amazing series with nine other amazing YouTubers. We are part of the collaboration. God is doing a new thing, new year. So for the next 10 days, you will receive a brand new YouTube video from each one of our channels. Yes. So tomorrow, Bond with Christ will bring a video discussing, has your faith made you well? Mm. I am so excited to hear this. By the so title cool. alone, yes. I'm ready. Each of these amazing Christian women their information will be left in the description box below. So yes. be sure that you catch up on all of the videos in this countdown. Yes. So we're about to go ahead and jump into our video, yep. Write the Vision. So like we said, first you'll see a little devotional and us putting together our vision boards. And then you'll see us talking about our vision boards. So yep. let's go ahead and hop into this thing. Let's do it. The anchor scripture for this devotional is Habakkuk chapter 2 verses 2 through 3. In the English Standard Version. But before I get into that scripture, I do want to provide some background on what's going on in this book. So the audience that this book was written for is the people of Judah, and it is written between 612 and 588 BC. The purpose of this book is to show that God is still in control of the world despite the apparent triumph of evil. Habakkuk 1 verse 3 explains exactly what's going on in Judah at the time. Why do you make me look at injustice? Why do you tolerate wrongdoing? Destruction and violence are before me. There is strife and conflict abounds. What was happening at the time in Judah is exactly what's going on in our world today. There's so much violence and destruction and injustice all around. We should use this book to study Habakkuk's posture during this time. First, in Chapter 1, verse 2, he shows us that we need to take our complaints to God. Second, in chapter 2, verse 1, he shows us that we must wait for his answer. And finally, in chapter 3, verse 18, once he receives his answer, he shows us that we should pray to God with praise. We should also use this book to remember that God is in control. He's sovereign. And what's going on around you is a part of his ultimate plan. God says in chapter 1, verse 5, Look at the nations and watch and be utterly amazed, for I am going to do something in your days that you will not believe, even if you were told. We must remember that regardless of what's going on in the world, we must stay focused on the plans that God has for us. That brings us to our anchor scripture, Habakkuk chapter 2, verses 2 through 3 in the English Standard Version. Write the vision, make it plain on tablets, so that he may run who reads it. For still the vision awaits its appointed time. It hastens to the end. It will not lie. If it seems slow, wait for it. It will surely come. It will not delay. Let's look at verse 2 first. God tells us to write the vision and make it plain. When God says this to Habakkuk, this is how God is speaking to him by giving him a vision of what he's saying. He's told to write the vision and make it plain for anyone in Judah to read and be encouraged that the vision is coming. The way I relate this scripture to myself is I write down whatever God has laid on my heart as a part of the ultimate plan that he has for me. I do want to point out it is very important that we spend time with God as we're preparing our vision boards. 
In Psalm 37, 4, we're told to delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Spending time with him, he'll work on your heart and your heart's desires will be filled with what he has for you and not just what you selfishly want or what you see others have. I've seen times where people have created vision boards based on what they want or what people want for them or expect for them and they were disappointed the next year when everything on their vision board was incomplete. It's so important to go to God first for your vision because we're living in his will and not ours. Proverbs 19.21 tells us, Many are the plans in a person's heart, but it is the Lord's purpose that prevails. Once I've written down my vision, I find pictures slash scriptures that go along with that list as a visual reminder of what God told me to do. Then I put all of those pictures together and place them on the poster board and hang it somewhere where I'll see it every single day. That way, I'm constantly reminded of what God told me to do what I need to be working on, and I also use it as a reminder of God's faithfulness. Galatians 6 and 9 tells us, Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. The A portion of that scripture, let us not become weary in doing good, reminds us that we have to do the work. God has given us free will, so when he gives us a vision, we have to be obedient and have faith in that vision. Hebrews 11 and 6 says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. So it takes more than just writing the vision down. For example, if you put on a vision board, you want to lose weight, but you don't change your eating habits or begin to exercise. Do you really think you're going to lose weight? We have to put the work in. The B portion of that scripture, for at the proper time, we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. It's a reminder that once you put the work in, you will reap a harvest. It's your motivation. Putting your vision board in your sight constantly reminds you what needs to be done and it motivates you to do the work God told you to do. I also want to point out when you've achieved something on your vision board to remember when God first placed that vision on you and then to see how you've grown in that or to see what you've been blessed with, it's an amazing reminder that God is faithful to his promise. And it also reminds us that if he did it before, he'll do it again because he's always the same God. And he's unchanging. Moving on to verse three. For still the vision awaits this appointed time. It hastens to the end. It will not lie. If it seems slow, wait for it. It will surely come. It will not delay. Before ending this devotional, I want to acknowledge that everything on your vision board may not happen in a year. God revealed that vision to you, but it doesn't mean that it has to be complete within that year. He may have wanted you just to do research this year, just to grow before he gives you that next step. We have to remember that if God gave us that plan, it will not lie. We just have to wait for it because God is going to complete that plan when he wants to complete it. We just have to remember the posture of Habakkuk and Habakkuk 2 and 1 and just wait for it. God will fulfill his promise just like he fulfilled the promise of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Galatians 4 and 4 says, But when the set time had fully come, God sent his son. We just have to remember to do the work that we've been told to do. Have faith in God. Remember that he's sovereign and wait for it. And it will surely come. Now let's get into presenting our vision board for 2021. Hey y'all. So I just want to start from the top. Of course, going into the new year, we always have those fitness goals. Um, but I wanted to take a different approach on it. Um, just trying to start, you know, little bit by little bit, just changing one habit at a time. Especially like, you know, the end of 2020 and the holiday period. You know, everything is... It's not the healthiest options. We're just trying to change your mindset going into the new year. So that's that. Um, right below, I do have James 5 and 16 um, in the Amplified. It says, The earnest, heartfelt, continued prayers of a righteous man makes tremendous power available, dynamic in its working. So that's one thing that I did lose focus over in 2020. Um, there was a period in my life that I did kind of, you know, I wasn't going hard as a paint in my prayer life. <laughs> so in 
So that's one thing in that scripture. Um, we did have a principle of prayer series in my church. And um, it pretty much helped me fo- get my focus back on my prayer life. Because that is very important in a um, Christian life is a prayer life. It is a communication and also partnership with God. Um, so right below it's um, trust in God with all your heart and lean not into your own understanding. That's one thing that I've learned in 2020. So the next one is focus. Um, focus has pretty much been our church word for the new year for the last, I think maybe two, maybe three years. So I, you know, a lot of times we can get so off focus um, where we lose sight of things, the things that are going on around us. And it's important to always have your focus and to fix your thoughts on things that are lovely, that are pure or joyful. Um, so that's one thing that I'm I'm learning to focus in life to keep my focus on God. We can get distracted by things of this world, but it's important to stay focused, child. So stay focused, girl. Come on. And also, the next one is also just being an encouragement scripture. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. That's I encourage you to write that down on the index card and just put that in your car. Put it in your phone. Or you can just lean on it in times that you, you know, you, you doubt yourself and your ability. It's through Christ that we have our strength. I don't lean on it so much as on my body. Okay. <laughs> I don't know if you can see it, but it's like a dial of trust. It went from medium to high when I'm turning up my trust in 2021. So the next one is going to be about discipline. Um, I think around the latter year of last year, God pretty much gave me a word of discipline. And I pretty much I touched on it in one of my episodes of last year. But it was pretty much where I wasn't disciplined in areas of my life. And um, I started, you know, just disciplining reading different devotionals on discipline, and how that kind of goes hand in hand with focusing as well. So I did start disciplining myself um, within my time with God. Sometimes I would get off track, if I'm being honest. Um, I would go days without, you know, spending quality time with him and just kind of discipline myself in that area and also an area of finance um, with being a good steward over my finances and wealth and just knowing where your money goes is always good to know because you can be like, Girl, I just got paid yesterday. Now, what am I checking with? I know it just got in there. But you don't know where it went and just being a good steward and manager of your funds. Um, so I am learning that it's uncomfortable, but there is growth in uncomfortability. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for the word. Okay, down below is gonna it's um the cross and it says that it's already done. So it's important for us to keep focused on whatever we need, whatever we we're asking of God, that the work was done on the cross. And that's an important reminder that we need and a hope that we can lean on. Um down below I do have a home. For a while I have been wanting to be a homeowner. So I do and I am reminded of that. And to keep it before my eyes so I can see it and be reminded about that. I think that's why God has, you know, gave me the word of discipline. You need some discipline if you're going to be a homeowner, right? Can I get a witness? Um, back behind here, I need to rearrange it. But it is, um, it says, do not cross. It's pretty much a boundaries um, of setting boundaries for myself so that I don't get overwhelmed or anxious in moments and also like relationships and friendships um just creating a time for myself and God and also like really being a good manager of my time as well so just setting setting boundaries it's okay to say no so it's okay to say no at times um right next to it is business meeting with God um that kind of goes into this t-shirt and also this uh, seed, the seeds that are being planted. Um, so God did lay on my heart to start a t-shirt business. Um, so I won't go into detail about that right now. So it's not the time for me to share. So I will just be on the lookout for that as more information do become available. And I look forward to having you as a customer. The next one is let yourself be transformed by God's word. Um, This really hit home for me maybe like within the past month. um, To not only be inspired by God's word, but to 
be transformed by God's word. A lot of times we look to the Bible for inspiration. I need to be built up. But we need to also look at it as a transformation, a moment to change, you know, ourselves and to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. So that really hit home for me one day. Lastly, I did want to point out the scripture that I do have in the middle. And that is First Corinthians 9 and 26. And I'm not going to read this backwards, so let's see. So I run with purpose in every step. I am not just shadow boxing. So this scripture came along when I was uh, studying one of my devotionals within uh, on discipline. Well, the revelation I got from it um, was pretty much let every step that you take be purposeful. You know, just don't be out here just willy-nilly and, um, and just doing things because let, let everything you do, do it for a purpose. And let that, for me, it was let that purpose be for the kingdom and to glorify God. And, you know, do it for him. Do it for my daddy. So, um, that's pretty much it. I haven't glued these down because I am still working on it. And, you know, as um, God continues to speak before the year is out, I do, or with the, even in the new year, I do want the ability to, you know, make room for God still in here so just be on the lookout if you see some stuff around here don't act crazy don't act like i ain't tell you so that pretty much covers my vision board all right guys it's my turn to talk about my vision for 2021 i am a strong advocate for writing the vision down um and looking at your vision board having your vision in sight and having it plain too you know that's what the scripture says but um i have done vision boards how many years like huh. has it been like four years since every year we do a vision board and with that it just reminds me throughout the year what i need to do and what i want and what i want to succeed for so um this is my vision board i do want to say some of the things on this vision board it's just not for 2021 it's um uh, it may go over 2021 but it's starting in 2021 you know so I guess I'll start, let's start right here in the center. So it says God for dance. Um, and then it says knowing I can't, but he can. And so that is a huge revelation to me um, during the year of 2020. And so I just want to continue to take that within 2021 and just continue to build myself up, which goes into this section over here where you see the word self-worth. And then you see this little lady, she has um, a little tool in her hand because she's working on herself. That's what I'm going to be doing. And then at the top is the scripture, Colossians 2 and 10, where it says, So you also are complete through your union with Christ, who is the head over every ruler and authority. That is the scripture that I am leaning on in 2021 as I am on this journey of building my self-worth. Um, and my journey of completeness. Because we are already complete in the eyes of Christ. Um, and then right underneath that it says time to redecorate. This is, you know, be multi-purpose. So I want to complete decorate in my room. And then I also want to redecorate my life. Moving over to the right. I'll say this, this is the career side of things over here. I want to get into freelance editing on the side. So I just have the editing software that I use. And then I have a camera. Um, as you guys will see going further into the year, God wants me to influence people with my life. And so I want to be able to share more of my life. And so this is just a smaller camera. So I'll be able to carry it around and pull it out whenever I need to. Um, and it's also updated. It focuses automatically. It just make it will make it a little bit easier. Right over here, this would be my section where I'm really just things that I want to get into the habit of to make me a better person. Um, so I want to read more. I want to actually complete a book a month. That's my goal and I want to stick to it. Like last year, I did read books. That was my plan. Um, but I did fall off, especially once the pandemic started. I did fall off. So I want to read more books and um, not just fiction books, self-help books, religious books. Just, I want to just expand my knowledge. Next is this little woman with, uh, she's holding a dish. 
she's the symbolism of me wanting to cook more. I can't cook, but I just want to get into the habit of at least cooking, you know, once a week or learning more recipes. Because, you know, just going back into if you want to be a wife, you want to be a complete wife. But I need to take care of myself, too. So I need to cook more for myself when I get ready to move out, right? All right. So next is the 5 a.m. club. I want to be a part of the 5 a.m. club. I believe I'll get way more things done being a part of the 5 a.m. club. So that is my goal. Keep me in your prayers because 6 o'clock is a struggle sometimes. Down at the bottom, I don't know if you guys can see this. This kind of goes into uh, play with um, up here with the camera. So it just says Christian YouTubers, you know, which is what the podcast is doing. So I just put some Christian um, YouTubers on here that inspire me. So we have Ashley from Coffee and Bible Time. I could not fit Taylor on here. She is the second half of that channel. And then we have... I always want to call her Tracy Morgan, but Morgan Tracy. And then we have Yasmin. Y'all have, y'all know we talk about her a lot. And then we have someone who's from our hometown. Her name is Lakeisha. She has a YouTube channel too. She's a minister and she just really inspires me. She struggles with social anxiety as well. So just seeing her push and do what she does for Christ really encourages me. Right here is just what I feel like God is laying on my heart to do in 2021, which is Black Christian Influencer. And then right above it, I have Intentionally Shay because, you know, I want to be intentional in 2021 the rest of my life. I just want to live my life intentionally. Right here in small, small foot, because I'm still deciding if this is what I want to do. But I want to learn more about the Bible. And so I want to look into becoming a Bible teacher, see if it's courses, certification, just something like that. But it's small because it's something that I'm still talking to God about. And then next is debt free, which I talked about in our uncertainty video. Um, and I have my scripture, Ephesians 3 and 20, written across it because I am hope it and believe it in God that debt that will happen and I am currently on the journey to a debt free 30 um and then the last thing the scripture that I just want to mirror my life against and the scripture that I need to lean on because a lot of the time um the enemy will try to attack me with just telling me that um I'm doing what I'm doing for the wrong reasons. And this is just a scripture that I want to lean on daily in 2021 so I can keep pushing and um, not let the enemy get in the way of what God has purposed in my life and reaching someone out there. And it's just 1 Thessalonians 2 verses 3 and 4. And I'll read it. For the appeal we make does not spring from error or imprimatives, nor are we trying to trick you. On the contrary, we speak as those approved by God to be entrusted with the gospel. We are not trying to please people, but God who tests our hearts. And so, like I said, I probably do a video, another video going into more detail with that. But I, I remember when God led me here, it was just such a revelation and a clarification. You're in the right place. Don't let him win basically. But that is my vision board. I hope you guys enjoy it. I'm going to hang this up above my desk so I'll be able to look at it every single day. I can see it uh, from my bed without my glasses on. So that was another thing. So that's why I got a big frame. I'm just going to hang up. I'm going to be able to look at it every single day during the year of 2021. All right, so thank you guys for tuning in to our video and also tuning in to day one of the collaboration God is doing a new thing, new year, mm -hmm. with nine other amazing Christian YouTubers. Right. Like we stated at the beginning of the video, Bond of Christ is going to go tomorrow, so mm -hmm. you want to be sure to tune in. Remember, all of those channels will be linked down below, right. so you, you want to go ahead and subscribe, and remember to tune in every single day at 3 p.m. That's right. Be sure, if you haven't already, go ahead and like this video, mm -hmm. share it with five of your friends, yes, said what I said. Five of your friends. They will thank you later. Also, be sure to check us out on all social media platforms as Obedience Podcast. Yes. And if you have any prayer requests, 
please be sure to email us at obediencepodcast at gmail.com. And we'll stand in agreement with you guys and pray with you. Um, I think that's it. I think so. But in the meantime, as always, be, be obedient. obedient. We'll see you guys next, next time. time.